is just parentheses, open parentheses and close parentheses. That's like symmetry. All the ways that close space parentheses. Alright, uh, so what's a factor? Someone awesome, please. And just pick a and be whoever answers this question. Uh, so thought, at least some thought. Even if you're wrong, if you thought, I love it. At least, like, um, two numbers that can be multiplied together to make another number. Yeah, if I could, if I were like an anime character, I'd jump up in the air, lots of feet, and then I would. Yeah. Another number that goes into another number. It's good. Goes into. Goes into is one of those words that's kind of non-specific. What's a word that means not specific? Like land. Uh, land. Land is like not exciting. General. Kind of general. Yeah. Ambiguous. Uh, arbitrary. Yeah. Uh, a number that can be multiplied by another. Okay, very good. A lot like Reese's definition. I think that definition, or, or some variant of that definition, I think is, is the most clear. Okay, so a factor is a, is a, let's just say a thing. Okay, if we were to be really mathy about it, we would say like a, an element. Okay, we have sets of numbers, and the things inside the sets are elements of the set. So uh, two things, two elements, two objects, two items, whatever, that you can multiply. Multiply is the key, key ingredient here, that you can multiply together. Um, let's say a factor is a thing that you can multiply by another thing to get whatever, a particular product. Right? So product. Uh, that kind of, um, no. A factor of a number okay, would be uh, a number, not so general, not an item, not an element, not a thing, but a specifically a number, uh, which can be multiplied. Very important that we use the word multiplied there. It's very specific. It goes into or divides or goes evenly or whatever. Those are, like, what does that mean exactly? Exactly it means this. You multiply it by another number, you multiply it by another number, to get a particular desired specific uh, product. <coughs> so example. You can give me an example of a thing that's a factor of something else. And then say, here's why. Three times three equals six. And two and three are factors of six. Okay. So we'll just pick one. We can pick two or three. We'll just pick one. Three is a factor of six. Okay, we know that. But the, the verification, the proof, the definition of three being a uh, factor of six is that we can say these three little dots, three uh, times two equals six. What do you think this three little dots mean? What word that you put right there instead of these three dots? Three is a factor of six. Factor. Factor. <laughs> factor. <laughs> three times two is six. Probably not factor. It's a justification. How about because? Three is a factor of six because three times two is six. It's definite proof of that case or of that fact. Okay, so we're gonna have a factor of a number three times two equals six. Okay, here's a trickier one. The thing, the factors that we care about today are factors of polynomials. We've uh, we multiplied polynomials, added them, subtracted them, we have graphed them, we've done lots of things with polynomials, and today we're gonna have factor polynomials. So first we have to know what a factor is. So a factor of
we could really just kind of replace a few words in this definition. Right? It's, it's a polynomial. Right? The, a factor is a number of the product that you get is also a number. right? So the, the, the factors of a polynomial would be a doubler polynomial, some other polynomial right? of, a, of a smaller degree. So a polynomial. The factor of a polynomial is a polynomial, not a number, uh, which can be multiplied by another polynomial to get a particular product. Right? What would the product of two polynomials be? What? A polynomial. A polynomial, another polynomial, right? That's, well, that's what we're trying to do. So, can you give me an example of that? Just like this, three is a factor of six because blah, blah, blah. Can you give me an example of that? If you do, I will be really thoroughly impressed. polynomial is going to be the factor of another one. We just need to be able to multiply that by some other something <laughs> to get the desired polynomial. Okay. Take a second, write it down. Maybe you'll have to reverse engineer this maybe a little bit. Start at the end. Go back to the beginning of the middle. That will multiply so strictly multiplies by another polynomial to give another a third polynomial. How about x minus two? Because that's a, that's an example of a polynomial. It could be a factor of another polynomial. Okay. Here comes the reverse engineering part. Is a factor of Because, because x minus 2, what would prove that x minus 2 is a factor of whatever we're going to write here? Whatever we write here, if this is going to be a factor of this, then to prove that we have to take x minus 2 and do what with it? Multiply by a something to get whatever that is. What needs to go there? Examples and all be correct. They're just that smart. Are they? Yeah, Emily? Is it like x squared minus 4x plus 4? Okay, so we must get x squared minus 4x plus 4 when we multiply by what? Itself. So just multiply x minus 2 times x minus 2, and we'll get that? That's absolutely true. So x minus 2 is a factor of x squared minus 4, x plus 4, because x minus 2 times some other polynomial, right, happens to be just 
x minus 2 again. So x squared minus 4x plus 4. Right. Is there a limit to how many examples we can come up with right now? Mm -hmm. As many as we want. We can just put any polynomial here. And it doesn't even have to be x minus 4 or x plus 2. or right? It could be x squared plus 4x plus 9. It could be x to the fifth plus 3x. It could be any kind of polynomial we go here. And whatever you multiply, whatever you get, we multiply it together. Okay, well, then that is a factor of whatever that is. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what a factor is now. That's the noun form. Okay. The, the verb form to factor, right? what would it mean to factor a number? things that multiply together to make that number, like uh, 36. Let's, let's start with one that's a little easier, like um, 14. Right. Can we factor 14? <coughs> Two, and seven. Two and seven. We wrote it as, all right, we wrote it as a, as a product of two numbers, right? So that's what it means to, to factor as a verb factor a polynomial. Okay, so there's an example. To write as a product of two numbers. Um, We don't even fully understand how to do it or what it means, but we can at least replace the right words. So, like, D distribute? Or, say it? Yeah. Factoring is, in fact, you could give it a name D distribute, undistribute, reverse distribute. It's exactly what's happening, um, which means we're taking it back. Okay, remember on the quiz that we just took, which a lot of you did pretty well on, uh, before you, you got to the, the, the final answer, it had this big one polynomial. It began, it said find the product that had one set of parentheses times another set of parentheses, and then you distributed one into the other. So if you were going to go the other way, have the end answer and go back, you would undistribute the stuff that you distributed. So that's exactly what factoring is, undistributing. Okay. And by that process, what we do is write uh, as a product of two polynomials. If we had distribute, that's what it looks like. It looks like a num uh, polynomial times another polynomial. Yeah? Just stealing work. Oh, okay. Right, the product is two polynomials. Okay. So 14, we factored to two times seven. All right. So why don't we just make things... You guys can do this. So x squared plus... Uh, 5x plus 6. The truth is, we've got group R definitely 4. This is just a, a, a polynomial we're familiar with called a quadratic. X plus 2, x plus 3. X plus 2, x plus 3. We factored that polynomial. Okay. Let's see if you can do this one. It's almost exactly the same, it's just a little bit trickier. x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 6. Um, x squared plus 2 um, times x squared plus 3. Yeah. This is actually, this is. It's not a quadratic, because a quadratic is a degree two polynomial. This is a degree four, but it's in quadratic form. And we can write it like this, something squared plus, you know, not squared plus constant number. Right? This is x squared squared, this is x squared to the first, and this is the constant. So it's a quadratic form. Um, we're gonna 
write that out in case I didn't convey that clearly enough. This can be written as x squared raised to the second power plus 5x squared. That x squared be raised to the first power. A little bit redundant. <coughs> so something squared, just like this, something squared, plus 5 times that same thing, but not with a square, just to the first power, just to the first power, plus your constant. So we're gonna, when I say factor a polynomial, and I really am trying to get that word factor into your brains a little more than I have seen in my experience in my past with students, okay? Because it's hard, you, you, you're learning this stuff and you don't know which stuff is really important to, to log away forever. Factor is a really important word to thoroughly understand. So is a word like function, that's what we talk about what a function is so much what input is, what output is. So it's really important. Factoring means we're going to write this thing as a product of two factors, two things that multiply together to make that thing. And if we can do that, then, we're, then we've succeeded. We have written it as a, uh, as a product of two things. We have factored it. Okay. Um, from this section. Let's see how we do. Okay. Yes, to the fourth. Minus S squared.
So to give us a little bit of a, a head start to talk about this, we'll tell several people getting this idea. We're going to write it as a, as a product of two polynomials. And when we multiply them together, what's the first thing we want to wind up getting? First term that we want to wind up getting? 3s to the fourth. Okay. And uh, hopefully take in a little bit of a cue from uh, what we just did down here uh, with it being in quadratic form. You can notice that this is in quadratic form as well. we take uh, an s squared and an s squared. But that's not going to give us 3s to the fourth. It'll give us s to the fourth. So one of them needs to have a 3 with it. That one or that one. It doesn't matter. Now we'll get 3s, times, 3S squared times s squared is 3s to the Now we want to put numbers in there in such a way that we get a negative 24. Right? Remember, that's a, the constant number. So where we're going to get that is th this constant, whatever it is, times this constant, whatever it is. So those two numbers together multiplied need to multiply to negative 24. Okay. So we have, uh, we can kind of guess and check. It's kind of a bad situation because we've got 12 and 2, got 8 and 3, 6 and 4, 24 and 1. And then one of them has to be positive, one has to be negative, so they multiply to make it negative. Um, let's kind of go middle of the road, maybe at 6 and 4. And uh, we'll just throw it in there and see what happens. Go to 6 and a negative 4. So we do get the negative 24. But we also need to wind up with negative s squared. Okay. So we got 3s squared times uh, negative 4. That'll give us negative. 12s squared. This will give us 6s squared. That didn't work. That is not. Okay. And if we switch the negative and positive signs, that's not going to help much because this gives us negative 6s squared. If we were to switch these signs, we'd just get positive and negative and we'd get positive 6s squared. So 6 and 4, at least in that arrangement, don't seem. Six here and a four here. Whether the positive or negative doesn't seem to work out. So, um, we could try four here and six here. Get four s squared from there and negative eighteen s squared. <coughs> that doesn't give us negative s squared. Does anybody think they found the right combination, Brett? Three and eight. Which Three here, in here with the three, or in this thing? Um, three and a negative twelve. Yeah. Three here with a negative, and then an eight here. Okay, so we get eight s squared minus nine s squared, and that's negative s squared. Just like we get three s squared, we get negative twenty four, and we just found we get negative s squared. Okay, so what did we just do? Taking this and writing it this way. We factored it out. We wrote it as a product. And we also verified it by the definition of a factor. If this, if these are the correct factors, if this is a factor and this is a factor, then they should multiply together to get the particular product that we want to get. something that I think will help quite a bit. To, to factor this head on, it's kind of hard because it's got three terms like a quadratic does, but it's not really quadratic form because I can't 
multiply two x's of the same power to get x cubed. So that's that's one thing that's difficult. Um, and then we've got all these, these numbers two, four, and negative sixteen. So so out of this, out of this problem, you I want you to get the number one step you should always try in every factorization. Yeah? Simplify. How so? Or like because they all have a two and an x in them. Have a two and an x in all of them. Now how do we simplify it then? I'm curious to see Divide what you say. Divide by. Okay. Uh, or take off from. Yeah. If we, if we divide by it, then it, like, it like goes away. It disappears, right? And then it won't be worth what it was before, right? Yeah, you take it outside so, yeah. and put it in parentheses. Yeah, yeah. Take it outside, factor it out, undistribute it, right? So that we, we keep it. It doesn't change the value of the polynomial. But it does make what's inside the parentheses a lot easier. So here's what we're saying. Take the 2x. This has a 2 and an x. This also has a 2 and an x. This also has a 2 and an x. Right? And that's the, those are the biggest common factors that you can find out of all of them. Um, and what we put in the parentheses here is what's left over. If we were to distribute this back into the parentheses, we should get this. Okay. So if we put an x squared, 2x times x squared is 2x to the third. What would come next? What would we go here? Negative 2x. Times 2x. 2x times negative 2x is negative 4x squared. Minus 8. Minus 8. 2x times negative 8 is negative 16x. Now look at that. Inside the parentheses, we have a much nicer looking thing, a quadratic. Is that pretty manageable? So we just took something that wasn't quadratic and made it quadratic. Yeah. Part of it's quadratic. It's a a single term, a monomial, times a quadratic. And now I can factor that quadratic. So if you think about it, we factored out a 2x. We made it the product of 2x and this quadratic. Okay, so that's, that's factoring. But there's more factoring to do. Okay, so sometimes factoring takes several steps of factoring. It's already fa it is a this is a factorization, but it's not all the way done. Okay, it's not what you call a prime factorization. So I factor out the two x. Okay, now we're going to factor this guy here. We're going to write it as the product of two two polynomials. Two x x minus four. And then we look at all these factors and like, we, I can't factor that anymore. So it is just two times x. This is x minus four, I can't factor x minus four, right? And I can't factor x plus two. That's for sure because I can't, uh, they're all degree one. This is x to the first, x to the first, x to the first. You definitely can't factor that anymore. So the number one step, if we were gonna create steps for this, the number one step that comes out of this Factor out the greatest common factor. A factor that all of these have in common. And that factor was 2x. So 2x factor in there, factor 2x there, factor 2x there. So you can't factor out anything that depends on y. Yeah, well, if we couldn't have factored something out in this example, then yeah. Like there's been a 5 there. Instead of a 2? Yeah. Yeah, then it would become a lot harder. Maybe unfactorable. Okay. And that happens with numbers too, right? It's like uh, 71, I think. Right? Pretty sure that's a prime number. Uh, 23, uh, you know, four digits. 42 now, so it's like uh, 42 is easy, right? Oh, okay, not this one. Not this question. Okay, so uh, factor out the greatest common factor first and then proceed. Okay? If you do that, it makes it a lot, a lot, a lot simpler. Okay, we're doing great. We're doing great. Um,
that. I just want you to break it down so that it is a product. Things multiply together. And remember that very first step before you get into trying to write those parentheses, uh, you know, two sets of parentheses or something, factor out what you may have. 